If you rewind back a few years, Mark Zuckerberg was one of the most hated men in America. You can't tell my privacy. But you may be saying to yourself, who cares? He's a billionaire. I wouldn't care if people hated me as a billionaire. Aren't haters a good thing? Well, maybe a little hate is good, but when you're one of the richest public billionaires in the world like Mark Zuckerberg, if enough people hate you, they will eventually tear you down, take everything you have, and throw you in prison. And you don't have to look far to see examples of this happening. Because if you didn't know, here's how America works. In America, you have prosecutors, judges, and so on that are all elected officials. That means the only way these people can move up in their career is by pleasing the public. That means if they want more fame, if they want more status, if they want more recognition, if they want to just keep their job, they have to tear down people that the public hates. That's essentially their role in society. Their job is not to seek justice or the truth. There is no such thing as innocent until proven guilty. All of that is just an illusion in America, just to make people feel like they live in a fair society. In America, if people hate you enough, these elected officials will find one way or another to throw you in prison. And newsflash, throwing anyone in prison is ridiculously easy. Why do you think we have thousands upon thousands of laws? Why do you think we live in a country where the average person commits three felonies a day? An average busy professional in this country gets up in the morning, you know, gets the kids off to school, goes to work, uses the telephone, there we go, federal offense, or email, uh, has meetings, or works on a prospectus or a bank loan or whatever, uh, goes home, puts the kids to bed as dinner, uh, reads the newspaper, uh, and goes to sleep and has no idea that in the course of that day, he or she has very likely committed three felonies, uh, three felonies that some ambitious uh, creative prosecutor uh, can pick out of that day, day's activities uh, and put into an indictment if the feds so, so want. The reason why we have so many laws is that so you can be taken down at a moment's notice if it serves the powers that be. Now put yourself in the shoes of a billionaire and you'll see the problem that Mark Zuckerberg has. Think about all the prosecutors, the judges, the senators, the congressmen that are just salivating at the mouth for an opportunity to be the hero that takes down this evil villain. If Mark Zuckerberg doesn't repair his reputation soon, if he doesn't make himself seem at least somewhat likable, at least somewhat human, think about all the stuff the government is gonna do to him. They can find Meta, they can regulate Meta, they can claim that it's a monopoly and break up Meta, they can ban his apps and ultimately, they can throw him in prison if they really want to. Here's what everybody's been trying to tell you. I say this gently. Your user agreement sucks. But shockingly, Mark Zuckerberg seems to actually be pulling it off. He's actually managing to make himself somewhat likable. I'm gonna have you right here just so there's a little bit of light in the background. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright, cool. Yeah. He says when he looks at the portia, he's boxing heavy. Can you circle all the traffic lights, please? You actually did it. That is very impressive performance. See, Bill Gates had the same problem. He was once the most hated man in America in the 90s, except he fixed it by making himself look like a generous philanthropist that we talked about in this video. Mark Zuckerberg seems to be taking a different approach, and it looks like it's working even better than good old Billy Gates. In fact, it's working so well that the hashtag Hot Zuck Summer was actually trending online. But what you may not know is that this is not the first time Mark Zuckerberg has tried to rebrand himself and repair his public image. In fact, he's gone through a few software updates before. He's gone through presidential candidate Zuck, philanthropist Zuck, and maybe even the strangest version, meat smoking Zuck. The difference is that every single one of these rebrands crash and burn within a few days. So what changed this time? And if you're an aspiring billionaire or public figure, what can you learn from Mark's successes and failures when it's finally time for your turn to take the throne? Stay dangerous and let's get into it. One of the ways Mark Zuckerberg continues to grow his wealth is by investing into private companies. He does this through his family office called Iconic Capital. The benefit of investing into private companies is that you get in at a lower price before they potentially IPO or get acquired. And this is pretty much what all rich people do. But the problem is traditionally to invest into private companies, you need to put a lot of money into a private equity firm where they have super high minimums of at least a few hundred thousand dollars. Your money is locked in there for years and you pay insane fees. But not anymore thanks to Link2, today's paid sponsor. 
With Link2, you can buy pre-IPO shares from companies like Epic Games, Whoop, the AI company Lambda, and much more, all in the click of a few buttons on their easy-to-use platform. With no brokerage fees, no management fees, no administrative fees, no carried interest, their investment minimum is super low. And on top of that, you can even list your shares for sale on their platform if you want to sell. They've got a ton of companies you can research and choose from, from AI to blockchain to quantum computing to robotics to even space exploration companies. Signing up is super fast and easy, and for a limited time, you can get $500 off your first investment by using my promo code JAKETREND500 with the link below. This offer ends soon, so if you're serious about building a private equity portfolio, now is your chance to get started with $500 off your first investment just by clicking the link below and using promo code JAKETREND500 at checkout. Now back to the video. Mark Zuckerberg has always had a really hard time being likable. As far back as his days in Harvard, he was known as being the weird super dork who listed stuff like defeating Nemesis as a personal interest. He created a site called Face Mash after getting turned down by a girl he likes. It was a website that compared pictures of Harvard students to farm animals and asked people to choose who was more attractive. It blew up but it just made people hate him even more. But once Facebook blew up, the hate for Zuckerberg just kept rising to new and new levels. In 2014, it came out that Facebook has secretly carried out psychological tests on more than 70,000 users without their consents. In 2016, there was all the controversy between Facebook and the presidential election. And two years after that, the Cambridge Analytica scandal broke, revealing how Facebook used private user data to run its targeted ads. That same year, they were also accused of allowing Myanmar's military officials to publish posts that incited genocide against the country's Muslim minority. Zuckerberg was scolded in front of Congress that same year, which is where we got these amazing robot pictures. I mean, Mr. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um, <laughs> uh, no. And less than a year later in 2019, Facebook was fined $5 billion for violating user privacy. And as Facebook's founder and CEO, Zuckerberg looked like the genius behind every single one of these scandals. So needless to say, there were many reasons to hate him. On top of that, the stuff he does in his private life doesn't help either. Like the time he went surfing with a face caked in sunscreen to avoid the paparazzi. Or the time he sued native Hawaiian families to force them into selling their land to him at auction. Also that he can build a massive mansion and an underground doomsday bunker that he barely ever uses. It also doesn't help that he would turn into a sweaty, incoherent mess every time someone asked him a difficult question in public. It's like the guy just wanted to be hated. But in reality, Zuckerberg probably couldn't help acting like this awkward robot. After all, you don't just build Facebook by being a normal human being. In his 20 years of fame and wealth, he managed to somehow piss off literally everyone. And by the mid-2010s, Zuck could feel it in the air. He could feel that if he didn't change something soon, the masses would start sharpening their pitchforks and lighting their torches. And this is when we started getting introduced to the many cringy sides of Zuck. So you're Mark Zuckerberg and right now, you're what we call Factory Setting Zuck. Factory Setting Zuck is a Zuck with zero personality, zero people skills, and even less charisma. But with a few software updates, maybe you could change that. So you start thinking, you start looking at the other billionaires the public seems to love, and suddenly something becomes very clear. You don't necessarily need to be a nice person for people to like you, you just need to have that bad boy personality. So you decide that instead of becoming an outgoing people person, everyone already thinks you're a bad person, so why not lean into your bad reputation instead? So you went all in and relaunched yourself as the new Devil May Care Zuck. You did a bunch of edgy stuff like refusing to get up for work before noon, and even though it did help you look a little less bland and boring, it didn't really do much to help your reputation. You needed to try something different. So you went through a little media training, got comfortable in front of the camera, and launched whatever this was. Yeah, someone asked me, do I smoke meat? Smoking meat, smoking these meats. Smoking meats earlier in the day. Smoking these meats, just set the charcoal up and you set the, the wood chips up and then smoking meats, grilling, grilling meats, good smoky flavor. Smoke a brisket for like 12 hours. You smoke lemon chicken, smoke salmon, you'll love it. Bison sirloin, ribs and sausage. So I'm looking forward to, to that. This time, instead of trying to focus on your likability, you decided to become more relatable instead. Sure, you still had zero people skills and zero personality, but none of that mattered as long as you could convince average everyday Americans that you were just like them. And how would you do that? Would you make it look like you drove an affordable car just like everyone else? No. You needed something more American than that. Would you show yourself sitting in the front row of a Lakers game? No. Basketball is American, but that's still a little too unrelatable. Would you show yourself doing grocery shopping at Walmart? Nope. You needed something even more everyday American than that. So you launched this campaign. Ah yes, Farmer Zuck. 
the unlikable billionaire who was really just another homegrown down-to-earth American like everyone else. And for a while, it worked. People started warming up to the Zuck that bottle fed cows and toured family farms. But then, this story broke. And suddenly, all the street cred you got for looking like you cared about everyday Americans went out the door. People saw straight through your lies. And this meant that it was back to the drawing board for you and your PR team. Over the next few years, you would go through all sorts of personality rebrands. There was philanthropist Zuck, who donated hundreds of millions of dollars to public schools, and the wannabe presidential candidate Zuck, who maybe thought that your strange behavior would make more sense as a politician. There was even super sorry Zuck, the guy who constantly apologized for everything in his company but never did anything to change it. In 2003, Zuckerberg apologized in the Harvard Crimson for any harm done after his website FaceMash asked users to rate people's hotness. Three years later, Zuckerberg said Facebook, quote, really messed this one up following user complaints that the newly launched news feed invaded their privacy. Zuckerberg apologized once again in 2007 for an uproar over the company's beacon advertising system, saying, I know we can do better. It seemed like every time you or Facebook faced a new scandal, you would shed your personality like a snakeskin to go on with the next rebrand. And this latest version of Zuck is no exception. Only this time, it might actually be working. Introducing Alpha Zuck. This new and improved Alpha Zuck is into extreme sports, MMA, raising cattle, and building off the grid homesteads for his family, ironically, on the same land that he sued Native Hawaiians for. This new version of Zuck isn't afraid to get into a fight. Alpha Zuck put Elon Musk into his place by getting Musk the chicken out of their fight altogether. Zuck versus Elon fire. No, he's checking out. What? That's. Uh, I don't think he's checking out. Yeah, no, he's just checking out. Do you think so? Yeah. Buck, buck, buck. Well, maybe buck, he's buck, buck. Zuck, 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 <laughs> Zuck, Zuck. <laughs> Alpha Zuck is getting on all the popular podcasts like Lex Freeman and Joe Rogan. And by the way, getting on popular podcasts is an extremely important tool in the billionaire's toolkit for getting the public to like you. This is because usually the only exposure billionaires get to the masses is when there's some giant scandal about them. The masses never get to see these billionaires for extended periods of time and actually get to hear them talk. That's why if you're a public-facing billionaire, crucial that you get on popular podcasts to humanize yourself. Why do you think Elon Musk has always gone on Joe Rogan? Or why Jeff Bezos just followed in Zuck's footsteps and got on the Lex Freeman podcast as well? Or why the Pfizer CEO also got on the Lex Freeman podcast? When you spend an hour or two watching someone express themselves and their fears and insecurities and opinions, even if they're awkward and don't do well on camera, unless they severely, severely mess up, it's kind of hard for you not to like them or at least see them as human. Alpha Zuck is also the MMA bro who doesn't watch TV because it puts him into a beta state. But the biggest difference between this Zuck and all the other versions before him isn't just that he's getting ripped and doing cool stuff. It's the fact that it seems like he finally stopped trying so hard to get everyone to like him. Or at least that's what it seems. On the surface, it looks like this new public image is Zuck finally finding himself. But if you dig deeper into this new persona, the more you realize that it may not be all that authentic. Just like the previous versions of Zuck, this could very well be just another carefully crafted persona, while Facebook goes through another massive scandal. Take a look at all the traits that make this new Zuckerberg different from factory setting Zuck. He's confident and outspoken, he's showing off his masculinity in feats of strength, he's being controversial by picking fights with fellow tech CEOs like Elon Musk, he's building homesteads and raising cattle, he's telling everyone that TV is turning their brains into mush. Take away the fact that he's Mark Zuckerberg, and this just sounds like the exact playbook of every top G chad on the internet right now. And that's probably where the reality of Zuck's new public image lies. He is just following the trend. Right now, stuff like health, masculinity, traditional lifestyles, and creating controversy are all blowing up online. And this new Zuck is taking off every single one of those boxes, like a more tame version of Andrew Tate mixed with Liver King. And hey, if it's true that Zuckerberg is finally coming into his own and finding his stride in life, more power to him. He does look genuinely more happy than ever before. But let's not forget. While everyone is distracted with this new likable version of Zuck, Here's some information from a whistleblower who came before the Senate, testified under oath in public. He worked for you. He's a senior executive. So, for example, this is girls between the ages of 13 and 15 years old. 37% of them reported that they had been exposed to nudity on the platform unwanted in the last seven days. 24% said that they had experienced unwanted sexual advances they'd been propositioned in the last seven days. 17% said they had encountered self-harm content pushed at them in the last seven days. 
That's right. At the same time, Facebook and Instagram are getting caught up in another huge scandal. This time, they're accused of pushing child predators onto underage users. But who's going to talk about that while well, they can talk about Zuckerberg's walkout at the UFC instead? So is this new version of Zuck just another carefully crafted PR campaign? I mean, he's clearly putting in a lot of effort into this new image. Just look at all his carefully crafted Instagram posts. When you're as powerful as him, none of these posts are just by accident or casual. Each of them is perfectly curated to show a new aspect of his personality. But again, on the other hand, Zuck does seem genuinely happier and more authentic than he's ever been. Maybe he's finally embracing his masculinity. If I had to guess, it's probably a mix of both, which is probably why it's actually working this time. So what is the lesson you can learn from this if you have plans on being a big public figure? Well, once you're in that position where everyone is waiting to tear you down, you gotta tone down that hatred by humanizing yourself. Get on some podcasts, show off your other interests outside of work. If you don't have any interests outside of work, you better find some. And most importantly, don't forget to show off some carefully curated flaws in your personality. We think that showing that we're perfect is the way to go. But the problem with that is that if you make people think that you're perfect, it just builds resentment. Because the masses aren't perfect, so choose some flaws that aren't going to give your ops an edge on you, and casually bring it up in conversations, on podcasts, and so on. Flaws give the masses something to latch onto to relate to you. And as we learned from Zuck, all of this only works if the personality you show off is at least somewhat rooted in who you actually are. Faking stuff, especially when you're already as awkward as him, is not going to be a good long-term strategy. I hope you enjoyed this masterclass in modern public relations for the aspiring billionaire. As always, stay dangerous, and I'll see you in the next one.